Listen, I know we just met, but we have to talk. Yeah, it's not me. It's actually you. Um, this weight in your middle section, it's really annoying me. And I think uh, you'd be a lot sexier without it. Oh, hey guys, I didn't know you were standing there. How long were you standing there? Oh, man. Uh, well, FMG family, meet Torker 2, my new intake manifold. Yes, we just met and we're having the expectation stuck. I really don't like the weight in the middle of this midsection. And those of you that don't know Pontiac intake manifolds, the water comes across the front and can heat up your intake manifold. So we can actually get a divorce of the two pieces, cut that off, cut out that middle section, and give her a fresh coat of paint. Wouldn't you like that? What? Oh, no. They'll be here every week. So you have to get used to it. <laughs> the other cool thing here, guys, is I had this ported by Butler Performance as well. So this matches my ported heads, and we will be dividing or re cutting this off. Uh, we'll get to the workbench and show you the lines I'm going to make for our cut marks, but then we're going to give her a fresh coat of paint. Because those of you who have seen my engine in uh, videos past noticed it's too much chrome, too much aluminum. So this is the final step in my conversion to black and Pontiac blue. So I'm excited about it. Let's get to the workbench and see what we got to do. In case some of you guys are wondering what the difference is between the two intake manifolds, this is a, an RPM Performer from Edelbrock, and this is the new Torker 2. Um, this is clearly chrome plated. So I didn't want to cut this up. Um, so if we got a, say you got a raw one like this, we can do the same procedure because I can actually reach in here and feel the, the duplicate side on the back side too. We can actually just make the same cut that I outlined here. Uh, the other big difference between the two manifolds uh, is the height. Check this out. This is like an inch higher, maybe three quarters of an inch higher uh, for the carburetor height. And those of you with eagle eyes may have noticed this has provisions for port injection. So hint drop for you guys in a later episode, I am going to pursue port injected. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, so the fact remains, how do we separate the two? And if I turn this over, I tape this off just because it's a machine surface. I didn't want to scratch it when I turned it over uh, and stuff because after I'm done cutting, I'm going to wash the whole thing. So it doesn't matter if these are open or not. I might tape these two. I don't know what kind of manhandling, manhandling I have to do, but I'm going to transfer this line. I'm probably going to cut from this direction uh, using my sawzall or my reciprocating saw and uh, see how it goes. I might just make it easy on everyone and make a, make a say, cut it just down the middle like that and then go back and refine my cut. I haven't decided yet. Um, that would probably be the easiest thing to do just to get everything out of the way. Um, but we'll see how it goes. So next step here. Sorry guys, if you want to see the bottom side of this one. So like I said, you can easily make uh, a line through here and then cut right up. So if you have an RPM performer, you can do the same procedure. So let me get my tools together and uh, come up with a game plan and let's get to cutting. All right, change of plans as usual for with me. Uh, I'm going to use my bandsaw. So I'm going to, I made a 90 degree line, which matches up with our nod. Sorry guys, sorry. Matches up with our nodule on the other side. So the 90 degrees straight across. And the challenge was that this is at an angle. So how do I get it flat? And it happens to be two two by sixes or two by fours. Doesn't matter. That height is pretty much perfect for making a 90 degree cut. So I'm gonna do both sides and then probably just go down. Guys, stop yelling at me, man. Jeez. Okay, so we're gonna go down the middle, just like I kind of guess we would do, and then clean it up again on the bandsaw, assuming my bandsaw has enough reach. Because if you haven't seen my bandsaw, 
it's not full size. See, I told you, it's actually a DeWalt pipe cutter with this cool swag off-road attachment. I'll leave a link down below. This comes in so handy because you can put it in your vise. When you're done, you hang it up on the wall. So I'm going to use this today to get our cut started at least. If we need to go back to reciprocating saw, we'll do that. But I'm going to start here. There we go. All right, we're through. Ironically, I already did the other side with no problems. What the hell? So I know my bandsaw is throat limited, so I could probably only get to here uh, with the bandsaw, but I'm going to do the rest with my reciprocating saw and go from there. All right. I really wish I had a full-size bandsaw. That would have helped out tremendously, but as far as uh, we're concerned now, so we got my cuts on the ends. And like we had talked about before, I think I'm just going to go ahead and cut this off. Just cut right down the middle of this flat area with my reciprocating saw. So, here we go. Hey yo! That was a nice divorce, wasn't it? That was actually pretty clean. No one got hurt. Nice. Now I get to clean this up. So now I'm going to go back to my bandsaw and get closer to the edge. Hey, we did it without the blade coming off. Look at that. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Oh yeah, cleanest divorce ever. That's awesome. I was able to get the bandsaw in here as well and came out with a nice clean v in the middle got some cleavage there and uh next step is we got to deburr everything which is probably going to take some time um make sure you get these edges here on the machine surface it's a rough surface from cutting so make sure you uh, bevel that edge and i'm going to smooth it up and what i'm going to use is what's called a flap disc and those guys have not seen one before this is basically 80 grit sandpaper and there's no adapter for my die grinder and it screws right on like that. Pretty awesome. Um, the reason these are so cool is as these, as the sandpaper wears, it will come off, but there is sandpaper underneath. So it just kind of replaces itself. It lasts a long time. Let me show you one that's been used. It'll look like that and it's still useful. So I can still use this. Um, I love it. So I'm going to get to work on that. Again, I'm just going to deburr all the edges, see if I can smooth it out. And then we get to talk about paint, paint prep. So those of you guys have never seen my paint videos before, you're going to want to see that. Oh yeah, about an hour of grinding and just some carpal tunnel. <laughs> uh, that's my workout for the day. But if you guys can see, it's nice and clean. I cleaned up all the cut marks from the saw because this is the customer facing angle. If you catch my meaning, when you look in the car, you'll see this face. So I want to get rid of all the cut marks. Whereas this piece, I didn't care so much. You guys see those cut marks here? Yeah, you'll be able to see that through the paint, but I don't care because it's pointed that way. And nobody really cares about that side. So I'm pretty excited. Came out really nice. I'm going to, uh, I see some more cut marks. I'm going to clean those up. And the next step here is to get ready for paint. So you could literally put this in the car as is. It's nothing wrong with that. But I don't want the authentic Pontiac blue on there to make it look really sharp. Before we get to paint prep, we need to talk about our gaskets, guys. I am going to cut mine. I recommend you cut yours as well because... Number one, if you were to ever take this out while it's in the car and keep this attached, you're going to tear this right here. It's going to look ugly because this is going to be RTV down. You don't want to remove that. That's the other benefit of separating the two. And what we can do now is while it's on the bench, it's the best time to start making our cuts versus in the car. Now what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. I'm going to go ahead and line up my gasket to mount my mounting holes and my ports. Notice these are enlarged gaskets. You can get these from Butler Performance to match my ported intake and it matches my ported heads. So once we have it lined up, we can lay a piece of tape down. Just be careful with the tape. Don't leave it on there too long. It will take the gasket material off. That's why I'm taping in a region where it doesn't really matter if I take a little layer off. And so once we have it roughly in place, we can turn it back gasket side down. And now take some time to check your mounting holes that you're lined up on the gasket. And then we're going to take our Sharpie and make our cut lines. And I'm going to go around the whole top portion because depending on your heads, this might, these little tabs might interfere with your head. So I'm going to go ahead and mark it on the gasket just to see where I am on the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to get a razor blade and cut those off. All right, so I got my line and it helps to get a nice fresh razor blade. And I'm going to go right through that on the inside of that line. Probably have to do it a couple times. All right, there we go. Like I said, I'm going to take an eighth inch off both top and bottom of the ports. When you're making your straight cuts, it helps to have a nice straight edge to follow. And you can, you don't have to be uh, as exact on the line. You just follow your edge. Just like that. All right, there we go. Double checking my work. Nice clean cut around the edge. So it'll look really nice in the car. And this is the divorced part. And we get to do the same thing for this side. So I'm going to... I'm going to get to work, finish everything up, and be right back. Hey guys, that was a lot of work. I now have tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, whatever you want to call it. Oh my gosh, I don't want to ever do that again, at least for a while. But now you know you can actually do the same process to any manifold, stock manifold, RPM performer, torque or two. It doesn't matter. You can separate the water plumbing from the main manifold which keeps down your your air temperatures which is nice and if we ever have to remove that manifold we can without disturbing the plumbing for the water that's pretty nice anyway next episode stay tuned because we're going to mask it paint it and install it and i have a feeling i'm going to have a problem with the ground circuit because it's now paint it will be painted so uh, i don't know i haven't painted a manifold before so we're gonna find out thanks for hanging out subscribe if you haven't and until next time build them fast drive them faster see it